Hi there. Today we're going to talk about Lesson 100. And Lesson 100 has to do with estimating square roots and about irrational numbers. Before we can start to talk about square roots, we need to know a little bit about perfect squares. A perfect square is a number that's made by squaring, or multiplying by itself, a whole number. Now, I have created a a chart and you know you can go a lot further with this because there's an unlimited infinite number of square roots and squares. I just started with 1 through 10. If I square 10 that means 1 times 1 it is 1 and the square root of 1 is 1. Same thing with 2 if I square 2 it's 2 times 2 is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. We go all the way through okay and I just went up to 100 uh, if you square 11, you get 121. If you square 12, you get 144. And and you can just go on and on and on and on. There is an infinite number of perfect squares forever. In fact, we were talking about today, well, what's the biggest number? Well, it's infinity. Well, what happens if I square infinity? Well, it becomes infinity squared. If I take the square root of infinity squared, it's infinity. So it's kind of one of those math things that uh, walks around in a circle but it still gives you the same gives you the same result okay now we if we know what to num what to perfect squares a number is between we can use that to estimate a square root for a number that isn't a perfect square for instance here's our example what is the best estimate notice the word estimate of the square root of 45 okay well we have to think for a second and go back to that first chart what two perfect squares are close or what two perfect squares are on either side of 45 so let's go back and look okay 36 49 okay and their square roots are 6 and 7, because 6 times 6 is 36, and 7 times 7 is 49. Okay, so we are looking at a number probably between 6 and 7 for a square root of 45, but we don't know for sure what, we don't know for sure what yet, for sure. First, we want to look for the closest perfect squares, which we did, 36 and 49. We're going to place 45 in between those two. Okay, and then we discover by looking at the chart that the square root of 36 is 6 and the square root of 49 is 7. So somewhere between 6 and 7 will be an estimate of the square root of 45. So we have to decide what is that, or we have to try to get as close to that as we can. Now we can do it in our head if we kind of think about it. 36 to 49. How close is 45 to 36? Well, it's about 9 away. How close is 45 to 49? Well, it's just 4 away. So if we were thinking, we would probably say, hmm, I'll bet that the square root of 45 is closest to the square root of 49. So probably going to be past 6.5. It's going to be closer to 7, but it can't be 7 because 7 is 49. So it's going to have to be somewhere maybe between 6.5 and 7. So we're thinking in our heads here a little bit. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, and this I'm giving you the steps because uh, sometimes people have a hard time doing this in their heads. So this kind of gets you started. First, then we'll, we'll we we looked and found the perfect squares. Now we're going to say, what is the difference between 49 and 36? The difference. Subtract them. 49 minus 36 is 13. Okay. Now we're going to try to find the median or the middle between 49 and 36. Well, we subtracted them and got 13. And we would divide that by 2, which is 6.5. And now the third step says we add that 6.5 onto the lowest number, which is the 36, to see where the halfway mark is. Okay? Well, 36 plus 6.5 is 42.5. 
So the middle between 6 and 7, as far as square roots, is 42.5. So 6.5, which would be the middle, probably, between 6, six and 7, if you take 6.5 times 6.5, you're going to get 42.5. So that's what this means. We were looking between 6 and 7. Okay, we found what would be the middle, right here. And that middle was 6.5. Okay, now what that means, it's between 36 and 49. Okay, if we multiply or square 6.5, we're going to get 42.5. Now, the number that we're actually looking for is not 42.5 but it is 45. So our question is, what number squared will get as closest to 45? That's what we're looking for. All right. Now, sometimes I get a little bit caught up in these kinds of things that I have some fun with them. So here we go. We're going to look at this. And um, I, <laughs> I don't know. I would write them down just because I think it's interesting, the progression. But I don't know that you have to. Here we go. Check your answers to see where you are. So, we have 6.5. If we square that, we get 42.25, which we've already discovered, and it is not 45. It's too small. So, if we take 6.6, .6, and we're going by tenths here, and square it, we get 43.56. That's closer to 45. If we go clear to 6.7, and we square it, we get 44.89, which is probably as close as we're going to get uh, if we are just going to estimate you would say oh it's approximately 6.7 now I'm not done there I want to see more exact so I thought well I'm going to try this so I put 6.72 wrong oh it's not quite there yet and it's over it's over too big all right 6.71 Square it, I get 4502. Still too big. Back off, back off, back off. So, I go back and I take 6.7. Instead of putting a 1 or a 2 in here in the hundreds place, I go to the thousands place, which is a smaller number. I square that, I get 44.957. So I'm getting there, and I didn't go over. Well, and then, mm, you know, let's try a little bit smaller number and it's a little tiny bit bigger, but not super much bigger. 6.7055. Now that's tens, hundreds, thousands. I'm to the ten thousandths place. Squaring it, I get 44.9637. Is that close enough? Mm, not for me. So I try again. I go 6.706. Take that 55 and turn it into a 6. 44.97. Gosh, I'm getting really, really close now. I'm going to try one more. 6.707 squared, 44.98. Guess what? I gotta try one more. 6.708 squared gets me at 44.997. Now, all of these numbers go on and on and on and on and on. And these could go on and on and on and on and on because this particular square root of 45 doesn't have a nice complete total answer that we can just get on our calculator and pop it in and get the answer. That's why you were asked to estimate it. To be absolutely honest with you, the square root of 45 is 6.7082039322 dot dot dot. Goes on forever and ever and ever question to ask yourself. From looking at the answer of the square root of 45, does it repeat? Is there a pattern? Does it terminate? And the answer to all three of those questions would be no, no, and no. Okay? It does not repeat. There is not a pattern, and it does not terminate. So looking at this number, we see that there isn't a pattern, it doesn't terminate, therefore 
for the square root of 45 is an irrational number. An irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. Therefore, if it is non-repeating, non-terminating, no pattern, then it is irrational. A common example of an irrational number that we use all the time is pi. We've talked about how the fact that pi goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on without repeating forever, no pattern to it, okay? There's tons more of them out there. Uh, anytime you're trying to find a square root of a prime, you're probably looking at an irrational number. It, and um, like square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, square root of 7, square root of 11. And you can figure that out by just checking it on your calculator. If it gives you a number that does not repeat, does not terminate, and goes on and on and on, that's probably an irrational number. Well, thanks, folks. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Have a great day.